So now in this video, we're going to take a uh, quick look at one of the components of this integrated circuit kit. So I think this is a great kit to get if you don't have any integrated circuits. We uh, looked at the optocoupler there in the uh, last video. Now we're going to look at the NE555. I've done a lot of videos on the NE555. This will just be a quick introduction to this component. But in any case, it's a timing component, but we're not going to use it as a timing component in this video. We're going to wire it as a flip-flop. So I already have it wired. I'll take this apart and build it up again. It's pretty simple. But uh, in any case, these uh, pins have the same basic functions no matter what uh, circuit you make. But for the timing, you need a capacitor. And uh, the capacitor charging and or discharging will set the time. So now, with uh, probably every integrated circuit, you need to power this. And it can use a wide range of power supply voltages. We're going to use 5 volts. But in case the positive side comes to pin number 8 up here. They're numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If any source ever goes by numbering. And then ground is the negative rail right there. We consider that 0 volts. I'm using 5 volts. So we consider this 5 volts. So that powers it. It also sets, there's a voltage divider in there. Within the integrated circuit, it looks at, looks at one third of the power supply voltage and two thirds of the power supply voltage. And parts of the integrated circuit respond to that. You can make some adjustments to that when you learn the integrated circuit in more detail. But for the most part, we're looking at one third and two third voltages. We don't want the threshold pin to do anything. It's waiting for more than two thirds of the power supply voltage. So we're just going to take a jumper and put it directly to the negative rail. So it doesn't let any current in or out other than some leakage. But we, uh, we can, so we can put it directly in negative rail, but we have to be careful that we never attach anything directly to the positive rail there too, or that will be a short circuit through here. But as far as the pin is concerned, it doesn't take in or let out anything. But it's waiting for two thirds of the power supply voltage and we're telling it not to do anything. Pin two, the trigger, and pin four, the reset, do respond to a low signal. We don't want them to have a low signal that's false or something from the uh, radio waves and stuff, whatever, in the air, the electromagnetic fields in the air. So we want to tie it high with a 10 kilo ohm resistor in this case. I don't know if you can tell that's a red stripe there or not. I have the color codes in opposite directions there, but it doesn't matter. So, uh, what direction you put them into the circuit. So, we got positive there through a resistor though. Since we have a resistor, like I mentioned here, we won't want to go directly to the positive rail with this one. But since we have a resistor from the positive rail there, we can go directly to the negative rail with those pins. And now we have switches connected to those two pins. We'll zoom in, but here you can see that we have a switch. This jumper goes to the negative rail. I'm using blue, so it's a little easier to tell that it's uh, more negative than positive. I don't have uh, any more of these gray jumpers in this kit. At least I can't find them right now. So in any case, when I close the switch, we'll have a direct connection to the negative rail. It's separated top to bottom, but these two pins go across. So these two are always connected. Those two are always connected. You press the button, then the top to the bottom gets connected. So basically all four get connected. And uh, so, That'll bring negative there. We have the 10 kilo ohm resistor. I'll zoom in so we can see that a little closer. But uh, it's 10,000 ohms of resistance. So if we press the button, the uh, positive rail here basically doesn't exist. Any current that goes through will go directly to ground. All that pin sees is ground. And same with the reset pin. They are waiting for that low signal. The uh, high signal is just basically preventing them from doing anything but the low signal overpowers it. So now, we really have all that we need for this circuit. We want a load. An LED is nice, it lights up when we have the right signal. So, we'll pull back. You can see third pin down is not connected to anything. So we're a little cramped right here. Sometimes I put the output to the other breadboard, but I'm gonna kinda design this for people that only have the uh, single uh, breadboard like this. So, the LED needs to be the longer lead more positive and the shorter lead more negative for it to light up. So we're going to put the short lead to the negative rail right there. We could put the long lead to the positive rail and have it light up when we have a low output. I think we'll look at that next. But for now we're going to look at lighting it up when the output is high. So 
it doesn't go quite to the positive rail but it does go all the way to the negative rail when the output is low so 220 ohm resistor to protect it from 5 volts and uh, we are done right there that's it for this circuit pretty easy and uh, once you start wiring up the 555 timer other integrated circuits should be uh, rather easy so we have the set pin up here so that's the trigger up there so that set the output high we give it a low signal it set the output high the reset pin we give the reset pin a low signal it sets the output low we know that because the resistor goes to the negative rail right there so high low and the reset pin is the more powerful of the pin uh, these two pins or any other pin if you press reset it's going to reset the integrated circuit no matter what you do so there you go we got set reset now we can also so we're using 5 volts there and like I said before we could go to the positive rail so I'm just gonna do this you can also do this at any other time we could have instead of going to this jumper there just gone to that ground but it would have been a little cluttered but in any case we're gonna go over here and uh, I short circuited something but uh, not end of the world it was through a resistor so there we go that's why you usually turn the power off while you're wiring stuff up in case you bump but there you can see the LED is on that tells me now that we have a low signal so we must uh, hit that one last or a false signal trigger them and now we press that one so before we were pressing that one when it went to ground the LED turned on now it turns the LED off when we hit the trigger now we hit the reset pin now the LED is on whereas before when we were going to the negative rail it would turn the LED off so there's a lot of different ways you can modify these uh, just with simple changes these integrated circuits so you learn their basic properties and you try to think things up you look at other people's schematics see interesting things they came up with and you learn a lot really quick and you should have a lot of fun if you like electronics like I do so in any case Check out one of these other videos. I did a lot of other 555 timer videos too. If you search for Electrons at 555 or look uh, at my channel page or whatnot. Also, I have a website. I'm posting more and more videos to it uh, daily. So uh, check out the website too. I put all the links down in the uh, description. Check out one of the other videos posted though. Click the subscribe button and the bell so you get updates. I will see you in the next video.